I want to talk to you about agricultural commodities. Um, you have ETFs uh, for wheat, for corn, sugar, soybean. This is the guy for agricultural commodities, um, particularly for wheat from y Ukraine. That was a big issue, right? What's the supply picture like right now in the wheat? Era? Well, right now it's, it's fairly uncertain because we have a May 18th deadline for an agreement that Russia and Ukraine uh, worked out through the U.N. And, and with Turkey's mediation. And if that deal isn't renewed, there'll be a lot of uncertainty about wheat exports. And again, Russia and, and Ukraine combined, they export, the, they're the biggest exporters of wheat when you combine them in the world. Now, Russia exports four times more wheat than Ukraine. So th they go right to the end in terms of bluffing. But it's in Russia's best interest to keep things running smoothly, keep that export window open. Plus, they degrade through wartime efforts. Um, Ukraine's exportable facilities anyway. So they can agree to a, to a, a deal and bomb their ports, which is what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and I want to, this is a good time to educate people about how these futures commodity ETFs work. You know, one distinguishing factor of all these Tukrin agricultural products that you have is the structure of the underlying holding. So usually you get these commodities and they, they hold the front month futures contract. But, you, you know, you, you contract, these contract across multiple maturities, right? That's right, they do. We, we extend out across the curve, what they say, out into the future. Because generally, you're either using this as a trading product, in which case you don't care what it holds, although you hope it holds the front, because you're in and out. But a lot of people allocate to grains. Grains spend a lot of time trading at their cost of production when there are times of surplus right. and balance. And does having it across multiple contracts reduce the roll cost? What, what, yes, it does. It yeah. reduces I mean, that's roll a major cost. problem yeah, with these. It, we think it does because it depends on the shape of the curve, which does change. But we also, because you spread it out, we're not rolling the whole portfolio, say, 12 times a year, 100 percent. We're rolling the portfolio in, in corn with only five futures contract expiration. We're only holding three of them. We're, we're rolling roughly a third, five times a year. So it's a lot less in terms of rolling and roll costs. Right. Um, so you mentioned this U.N. green deal that's expiring uh, uh, May 18th? May 18th. Okay. Explain a little bit about what this deal does and will it be renewed or not? This deal allows the free export. Remember, grains come out of the Black Sea on ship. That's how they come out. Russia and Ukraine export a vast amount of grain to the world. We need their grain. We need their wheat. We need the corn that comes out of the Ukraine. Russia is not a big corn exporter. And it, when there's a war, people are worried about armaments going back and forth. So both sides want those ships inspected to make sure that there aren't uh, arms smuggled that could support the war. So they, they broker through the U.N. an inspection deal, ships that come in empty, ships that go out full of grain, that that's really what they're shipping. And so it, without that type of deal, then shipping of the, the world's number one grain exporter, number one wheat exporter is Russia. Shipping will become uncertain because you'll be in a war zone and people won't be in agreement that there'll be ships. There's a lot of uncertainty. Could those ships come under attack? So you see that underpinning of price uncertainty. But Russia's bluffed before. It feels it does feel a little different this time. We don't know right. which way they're going to take but the war. It, so what's the supply situation? Is there an oversupply of, of grain? There's right an now? oversupply of wheat in Russia right now. They need to move that grain. So really? So that means lower prices, that's right? That's correct. And, and wheat prices have been coming down. But that wheat's got to get out of the Black Sea. That's really important. And Russia's behind. They, they have almost 80 percent more stocks than above yeah. their five-year average. And they have a, a near record crop coming out of the field in a couple of months. So they Isn't need to amazing? We were afraid of like a massive grain shortage a year, a, a year ago. And now we have a grain surplus. Well, farmers are resilient. They, you know, they plant even if there's a war. Unless, unless your field's being bombed, you're a farmer, you're out there planting, prices are high, you're motivated to produce. And that's what farmers, in fact, all commodity producers are doing. They're producing. Yeah, which is a good thing. For, I mean, yeah, remember, we're, ultimately, we might talk like traders, but we're on the side of the consumers, that's right? right? I mean, that's the right. global economy needs wheat. That's right. We don't want people paying through the nose for high wheat. At least I don't.